You're doing a review. Well, yeah, that was the plan as usual. Ancient Gears, right? You will be using the most important card, won't you? Gear Town? Try again. How it, sir? Okay, what is it with you and the ancient gear golems lately? I wanted not to say anything, and I tolerated having 30 of them in my bathtub, but I do draw the line at having them in my food. Can't do anything about it. Konami's breathing down my neck, so I need to make sure you do this right. Wait, what? S since when? Use golem. Use it right. No excuses. This will all blow over soon. You know, if this is some kind of ironic punishment, it's wearing a little tin. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX began airing in Japan on October 6, 2004, and in a gorilla marketing stunt, the first set of that era, Flaming Eternity, was released a month and a half later and featured no GX cards whatsoever. A bit later, during early 2005, players were introduced to the Lost Millennium, the real carrier of the GX era paradigm shift, which strangely enough did not have a protagonist ace monster as a cover card, instead featuring a machine commonly wielded by one of his opponents, the Bygone Cog Giant, or Ancient Gear Golem, as it were. Used by the aggressively Italian and extremely gender-ambiguous Professor Kronos de Medici, which really sounds like a character designed by RNG instead of an actual writer, Ancient Gears were surprisingly prevalent through the next few series, even being used as the weapons of dimension-wide destruction by the Obelisk Force in Arc 5. This led to the archetype receiving copious amounts of support for more than a decade after its inception, not because of meta-relevance, but mainly due to the sheer level of popularity among the player base, presumably due to their visual design. Before analyzing every cog in the machine, it's worth taking a look at the original monster the rest of the archetype was based around. Ancient Gear Golem is a level 8 earth machine with 3000 attack and defense, it cannot be special summoned, it inflicts piercing damage when attacking a defense position monster, and if it attacks, the opponent cannot activate any spell or trap cards until the end of the damage step. The brutal beatdown effect, which was way ahead of its time, was also brutally overbalanced by the special summoning restriction, forcing you to invest in quite a few resources to even get a chance to put this guy on the field. Beefy attack and effect immunity during the damage step constituted as good boss monster material material back in the day, and while Golem is still most certainly a good beater, it's very obvious they wanted to shy away as far as possible from the special summon restriction with the new support, hence why most modern cards that give you access to Golem also happen to ignore summoning conditions. While the back row disabling effect is present on the majority of Ancient Gear monsters, its usage slowly fell out of relevance over time, given that people don't run battle traps very often these days, and like most machines do, Ancient Gears die to lightning. Yo mom gay! You could make the argument that the most competitive builds, if any at all, did not actively rely on Golem, but given that nowadays you most likely want to focus on the fusion and OTK aspect, running a few Golems is perfectly fine. Now, going by the standard lineup, the first monster we'll be looking over is Ancient Gear Redacted. Ancient Gear is a level 2 earth machine type with 100 attack and 800 defense, and if you control an Ancient Gear, you can special summon this card from your hand in face-up attack position. Keep in mind, it says Ancient Gear, as in another one of itself, not another Ancient Gear monster, and this one where the difference makes the card borderline unusable. If you could special summon it simply by controlling any other member of the archetype, it would actually be very much worth running due to being a free resource for links. However, at this moment, all this thing amounts to is a miserable and outdated tribute engine for Golem, which is even beyond salvation by Machine Dupe. Next up is Ancient Gear Cannon, another level 2, this one with 500 attack and defense, which you can tribute to inflict 500 damage to your opponent, and if you do, neither player can activate trap cards during the battle phase this turn. All things considered, it's weak, the burn damage is minuscule, it takes up your summon, it can be negated, people don't run many battle traps nowadays, but I did say all things considered, so I guess it's relevant to mention that it completely disables evenly matched. Set rotation, what? Red reboot, who? Ancient Gears had this in the bag 13! 
15 years ago, son! Don't play this one, it's pretty bad. Their first level 3 is one of their newer pieces of support, Ancient Gear Hunting Hound. It's got 1000 attack and defense, if it's normal summoned, it inflicts 600 damage to your opponent, it disables back row when attacking, and once per turn, you can fusion summon one Ancient Gear fusion monster from your extra deck, using monsters from your hand or field as fusion materials. Unlike Arc 5, in which the typical turn involving Hunting Hound consisted of burn, pass, burn, pass, Burn. Pass. Someone was paid to write this. You will rarely be relying on the burn effect because the focus on fusion is the core of the Ancient Gear OTK playstyle. Along with another one of their fusion cards, it pretty much eliminates the need for polymerization, and to be fair, the 600 damage can occasionally edge you closer to victory. Let's also be thankful that they didn't waste any pack space on adapting the rest of the hunting hounds from the anime, because by the time the fourth was introduced, the aesthetic teaming had gone far beyond ancient machinery and ended up looking a lot more like a fucked up tribute to Pooch. You wanna run three of these to ensure those big numbers. And that was their only level 3, because now we have the level 4, Ancient Gear Box. What's in the box? Chill out, it's nuts and bolts. It's got 500 attack and 2000 defense, and if this card is added from the deck or graveyard to your hand, except by drawing it, you can add one Earth Machine type monster with 500 attack or defense from your deck to your hand, except Ancient Gear Box. You can only use this effect of Ancient Gear Box once per turn. It's an odd case with Box, it offers deck thinning as well as a consistency boost, but you generally don't want to run three of them, as it tends to be more of an ancient gear bricks. The way you can search it out to apply the effect commonly used to be gear gigantex, but eventually ancient gears got their own monster searcher, making for a neat little consistency engine. It's a decent monster with a bit of a silly stat focus, but it does the job. Just don't run any more than two. Their next level 4 is Ancient Gear Gadget. Yes, those are two archetypes in one name, and somehow it manages to not help either of them. It has the same stats as Box, and if this card is normal or special summoned, you can declare one card type, that being Monster, Spell or Trap. This turn, if a monster you control attacks, your opponent's cards and effects of that type cannot be activated until the end of the damage step. Once per turn, you can declare the name of one gadget monster, this card's name becomes a declared name until the end phase. To those unfamiliar with this archetype, the second half of the effect must be immensely confusing, but to sum it up without revealing some other, bigger monsters, let's just say that certain high-level ancient gears require you to tribute red, green or yellow gadgets to gain additional effects, and the intention behind this guy was to circumvent the necessity to run the Technicolor robots for the sake of improving consistency, except for the fact that it was released in 2017 and nobody in their right mind was relying on tribute summoning ancient gears, especially with the bunch of new support they received which allows them to casually skip over that part. But hey, you can always Call Gadget Hauler for the element of surprise? Not to mention, the first effect is nothing to write home about either, as it relies on you already having an established field to apply a mediocre buff to attackers which most likely won't be needing it. The best thing you can say is that it's a target for Box and Machine Dupe to get access to several fusion materials, but increasing the amount of gadgets in your deck usually tends to increase the amount of dead hands in it as well. If you run it, you're most likely not doing it for the effects, unless you know you're playing against someone who will let you keep a normal summon level 4 on the field for more than 2 turns. Ancient Gear Soldier has 1300 attack and defense, it ignores back row when attacking, and fill in the blank space provided. This is essentially just something that was considered a tolerable amount of attack on this kind of effect without having to put any more effort into summoning the monster. It used to be the bare minimum for Ancient Gears, but that was 13 years ago when the bare minimum for the meta was a guy that looked like this. <gasps> the more relevant level 4 is Ancient Gear Frame. It's got 1600 attack and 500 defense and has the following effect. You can discard one card, add from your deck to your hand one Ancient Gear Golem or one spell trap that specifically lists the card Ancient Gear Golem in its text. You can only use this effect of Ancient Gear Frame once per turn. If this card attacks, ignore back row. If this face-up card in its owner's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can special summon up to 3 Ancient Gear Golem and or Ancient Gear Golem Ultimate Pound from your hand, ignoring their summoning conditions. A quick heads up, Ultimate Pound is just a shitty retrain. Anyway, it certainly does the job, even though everybody would prefer the job itself to be more beneficial to the community. It's not even the only card that searches Golem, in fact, their other searcher we'll get to in a minute is significantly more versatile, however, Gearframe is probably the best target for Box in the deck. The second effect is just completely fucking ridiculous, it literally never goes off, and I would have highly preferred it to be something more beneficial to the deck's playstyle, as opposed to being the card game equivalent to a bear trap that politely begs you to step on it. Not to mention the discard cost on the first effect can occasionally be a pain due to a lack of decent graveyard effects in the archetype, but at the end of the day it's more consistency and you can hardly say no to that. Not recommended at 3, but 
not worth running. Ancient Gear Wyvern is their next level 4, it has 1700 attack and 1200 defense. When it's normal or special summoned, you can add one Ancient Gear card from your deck to your hand, except Ancient Gear Wyvern. Also, you cannot set cards for the rest of this turn. You can only use this effect of Ancient Gear Wyvern once per turn. If this card attacks, ignore monster effects until the end of the damage step. Do I have to explain why you need to run 3 at all times? It's a level 4 that says, when summoned, add one archetype thing to hand. The first real piece of consistency support for Ancient Gears for more than a decade. The setting restriction is a bit confusing, they either wanted to prevent the abuse of a certain spell they have, or this was just the closest thing they could come up with as a cost for searching, but regardless it's not too bothersome. Play 3 of them, it gives you free stuff and enables box. Their last level 4 is Ancient Gear Knight, which has 1800 attack and 500 defense, is a Gemini monster, and when normal summoned twice, it ignores back row when attacking. Oh, he's old, and his skin is cold. In a similar situation to Soldier, this was considered the adequate amount of effort required to get an 1800 back row hater, but it's been god knows how long and the only thing that makes Knight even remotely worth considering nowadays is that he's searchable by box, that is, if you really value the extra 200 attack over the effects of gear frame. I, for example, don't. How did they conquer an Xyz dimension with these? Did they catch everyone while the meta was unformed void turbo? Ancient Gear Engineer is a level 5 with 1500 attack and defense, negate any trap effects the target discard, and if you do, this destroy that trap card, if this card attacks, ignore back row, and at the end of the damage step, if this card attacked, target one spell or trap card your opponent controls, destroy that target. It's a level 5, with 1500 attack and defense, targeting trap immunity, and pops back row after battle. The only way this card could be more outdated is if it had needlessly elaborate rulings in the effect text. Regardless of position. Run two of them if you really like making infinity in decks in which it was clearly not meant to be ran, but keep in mind I will judge you for it. Ancient Gear Beast is a level 6 with 2000 attack and defense, it cannot be special summoned, if it attacks ignore back row, and negate the effects of a monster destroyed by battle with this card. The rust on this generic beater really shows the card's age. It's the flagship representative of the old Ancient Gear style, that being Tribute Summon, Beat Hard, Go Home. Sadly, that just doesn't work these days. Shame because I like the art, but I guess Hunting Hound is a decent replacement. Ancient Gear Gajiltron Chimera, okay, is a level 6 with 2300 attack and 1300 defense, and this card gains the appropriate effects if you normal summon it by tributing these monsters. Green Gadget, this card gains 300 attack. Red Gadget, if this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent by direct attack, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Yellow Gadget, if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, inflicts 700 damage to your opponent. Oh, honey, I would not call those appropriate effects. This was abysmal even for the 2006 structure deck in which it was released. The thing doesn't even have the back row effect. I guess Beast was as high as they were willing to go with attack on that kind of ability. Anyway, just don't. It's an abomination both visually and mechanically. A bit more tolerable is its retrain, Ancient Gear Hydra. It's a level 7 with 2700 attack and 1700 defense. At the end of the damage step, when this card that was tribute summoned by tributing an Ancient Gear monster battles an opponent's monster, but the opponent's monster was not destroyed by the battle, you can banish that opponent's monster. If this card was tribute summoned by tributing a gadget monster, it can attack all monsters your opponent controls once each. If an Ancient Gear monster you control attacks until the end of the damage step, your opponent cannot activate spell or trap cards, also monsters in your opponent's possession cannot activate their effects. Hey, I said a bit more tolerable, not amazing. Streamlining the tribute requirements to Ancient Gears and Gadgets was actually kinda neat, because Ancient Gear Gadget fills both of those roles, however, the first effect is thoroughly underwhelming, and while the second one is decent, you'll hardly wanna put in the effort to actually summon this thing all the time. Thankfully, it has an effect of its own, regardless of being tribute summoned, which is fine, but again, it doesn't exactly do anything to advance your plays, it's just a big oonga boonga beater. Then again, you could argue that's kinda the point of Ancient Gears, so run one by preference. And because somebody thought Chimera was just a magnificent idea, the old Ancient Gear structure deck also featured Ancient Gear Gajiltron Dragon, a level 8 with 3000 attack and 2000 defense, if it attacks it disables back row, and gains these effects depending on the gadget you tributed for it. Green Gadget, if it attacks a defense position monster, inflicts piercing damage. Red Gadget, if this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, inflicts 400 damage to your opponent. And Yellow Gadget, if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, inflicts 600 damage to your opponent. It may not look like much nowadays, but Gajiltron Dragon used to be a staple of the so-called Gear Town Turbo builds, involving the exploitation of an outdated ruling for their field spell, which we'll get to soon enough. However, the keyword here is outdated, since the trick doesn't work anymore. Dragon had his 5 minutes in the spotlight, but there's not much incentive to run him nowadays, despite being a target for trade-in and having the back row disabling effect with 3000 attack. That's what you get when you base your card design on the school of Voltec Dragon. 
However, he also received a retrain in the new structure deck, that being Ancient Gear Reactor Dragon. Wait, Reactor? They never truly left us, did they? It's a level 9 with 3000 attack and defense. If it was tribute summoned by tributing an ancient gear monster and it attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing damage. If it was tribute summoned by tributing a gadget monster, it can make a second attack during each battle phase. If this card attacks, your opponent's spell and trap cards as well as monster effects cannot be activated until the end of the damage step. At the end of the damage step, if this card attacked, you can destroy one spell or trap card on the field. A completely expected thing to note, you won't be tribute summoning this. The ancient gear spell and trap support offers enough special summoning options to shit this thing out whenever necessary, and thankfully it has effects to make up for not being tribute summoned. Like I mentioned with Engineer, I was never a fan of destroying back row after battle, but given that said back row is disabled when attacking, it gives the effect a bit more impact. Like Golem, it can be a brick if you draw it, and the level is kinda awkward since it doesn't allow for trade-in, but being an easily summonable 3000 hitter that flies over back row as well as monster effects makes it a good choice in the deck. Is, is that a Vylon? Well, at least somebody found some use for them. The last remaining main deck monsters are variations of Ancient Gear Golem, one of them being Toon Ancient Gear Golem. It's just Ancient Gear Golem with the standard Toon effect slapped onto it, meaning it cannot attack the turn it's summoned, and can attack directly if you control Toon World and the opponent controls no Toon monsters. Well, much like any other Toon monster, it's searchable by Table of Contents, which is a decent deck thinner, but that's about it. Even Toons can barely afford to run it due to a lack of inherent special summoning condition. I'll give him credit though, he's looking pretty funky! <laughs> The other variation is the recent retrain, Ancient Gear Golem Ultimate Bound. It cannot be special summoned. If it attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing damage. Up to twice per turn, when this attacking card destroys a monster by battle, you can discard one machine monster, this card can attack again in a row. If this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can add one polymerization from your deck to your hand, and if you do, add one other Ancient Gear monster from your graveyard to your hand. I'm sorry, did I say it was a retrain? Surely I meant to say it's a D-train. They kept the special summoning prevention from the first golem for some ungodly reason, removed the back row disabling effect which is a staple of the archetype, and they made it able to attack multiple times at the cost of dumping valuable resources. I'm inclined to call the floating effect decent, but the deck actually barely ever runs polymerization due to having access to their own fusion options. However, it's a great choice for all those high IQ people out there who prefer doing things like running Shadow Hound instead of Hedgehog. <laughs> Their first extra deck monster is Ancient Gear Howitzer. It's a level 8 with 1000 attack and 1800 defense, requires two Ancient Gear monsters, is unaffected by their card effects, and during your main phase, you can inflict 1000 damage to your opponent. You can only use this effect of Ancient Gear Howitzer once per turn. If this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Ancient Gear monster from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Howitzer, you ask? It's Zer pretty good! Anyway, it's a decent first turn option if you don't have enough resources for their bigger fusion monsters, it basically forces the opponent to destroy it by battle, which leads to them either being intercepted by a 3000 beater or Wyvern, which can proceed to search out valuable cards for the next turn. The 1000 burn damage can also end up helping with beating the life points out of your opponent as soon as a bigger fusion is summoned. Definitely worth 2 or 3 spots in the extra deck. Next up is Megaton Ancient Gear Golem. It's a level 8 with 3300 attack and defense, requires 3 Ancient Gear monsters, if it attacks, disable back row until the end of the damage step, and if this card was fusion summoned using 2 or more Ancient Gear Golem and or Ancient Gear Golem Ultimate Pound as fusion materials, it can attack up to that number of times during each battle phase. If this face-up fusion summoned card in its owner's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can special summon one Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. It's fine, it beats the shit out of things, it beats them harder if you use multiple golems, and that's the point. It enforces running gear frames to set up some high damage numbers, and because it's not very likely this will be getting destroyed by battle, barring Utopia the Lightning, it has a pretty sweet floating effect. Run 2. The thing it floats into, though, just so happens to be the first fusion monster Ancient Gears ever got, way back in 2008, but I would not dare call it outdated. Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem is a level 10 with 4400 attack and 3400 defense, requires Ancient Gear Golem and two Ancient Gear monsters, and it must be fusion summoned. If this card attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing damage. If this card attacks, disable back row until the end of the damage step. If this card is destroyed, you can target one Ancient Gear Golem in your graveyard, special summon it ignoring the summoning conditions. It's exactly what it's as on the tin, Ancient Gear Golem, and then some. The fusion materials are a bit more specific than their other fusion monsters, but the archetype has just about enough consistency to make up for it. Not to mention it also floats off Megaton, so there are several ways of going about summoning it. For best results, pair it up with Power Bond and go in for the overkill. Die, you commie fucker! No. <laughs>
run one or two as the big heavy option. And as the biggest heaviest option, you can run Chaos Ancient Gear Giant. It's a level 10 with 4500 attack and 3000 defense, requires 4 Ancient Gear monsters and it must be fusion summoned and cannot be special summoned by other ways. It's unaffected by spell and trap effects. Your opponent's monsters cannot activate their effects during the battle phase. This card can attack all monsters your opponent controls once each. If this card attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing damage. I would object to this monster's visual design due to it not really looking like an ancient piece of machinery, but it also looks like it can evaporate half my country by farting, so I won't bother. This is essentially our win condition, your M134 among the M9s. If you summon it with power bond, and yes, the attack change does apply, you might as well just throw confetti and ribbons all over the place because you're effectively about to ship the opponent's ass to kingdom come. Satisfyingly, it also disables lightning's effect. Oh, that's how they killed all the children. Best of all, it's a dark attribute monster, so you can summon it with overload fusion for an explosive comeback. It's pure chaos, if you don't mind me saying, with the only downside being that it requires 4 monsters, which can be fairly tricky sometimes. Thankfully, Wyvern, Box and Gearframe can massively help out with said issue, so Chaos Giant can hit the field decently often. I just recommend winning on the turn in which you summon it, because it's very prone to removal in the next one. The first spell we'll be looking at is their field, Gear Town. Both players can normal summon ancient gear monsters for one less tribute. When this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one ancient gear monster from your hand, deck or graveyard. The tribute summon effect is cute, and it gives some utility to gadget in casual play, but the real purpose of Gear Town are the systematic acts of self-terrorism you'll be conducting by blowing the place up whenever possible to quickly shit out a 3k beater with no effort. 50,000 people used to live here, now it's a Gear Town. Before updated rulings, you could replace your current field spell with another one from your hand, and the previous one is treated as having been destroyed, which led to people stacking the place up with Gajiltron dragons, which is no longer a viable strategy, but the deck offers you enough options to destroy it yourself and make a reactor dragon pop out. It's a bit of an issue that it's not searchable by Wyvern due to the name, but terraforming is a thing. Run 3. The tool you'll be using to demolish this place most often is Ancient Gear Catapult. While you control no monsters, target one face-up card you control, destroy it, and if you do, special summon one Ancient Gear monster from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one face-up card you control, destroy it, and if you do, special summon one Ancient Gear token, a level 1 Earth Machine with zero attack and defense, and you can only use one Ancient Gear catapult effect per turn, and only once that turn. Also run 3, because it's a stupidly simple resource generator. Your ideal targets are Gear Town and one of their continuous spells, which usually leads to two monsters and huge damage on board, the only downside being the requirement of controlling no monsters, then again, the whole archetype is about sudden, simple and explosive plays, so it ends up working nicely. The token is also pretty sweet, allowing for fusion, link and even tribute summoning if you feel like being that guy. The next normal spell is Spell Gear. I don't know why you want me to do that, but uh, G-E-A-R. There we go. Send three face-up Ancient Gear cards you control to the graveyard. You can special summon up to one Ancient Gear Golem from your hand and one from your deck, ignoring the summoning conditions. Then destroy all monsters you control except Ancient Gear Golems. You cannot normal summon or set until the end of your next turn. Uh, uh, to cut it some slack, for the longest time it was one of the only ways Ancient Gears could put out several golems out on the field with minimal effort, even though said effort of bringing out three Ancient Gear cards to the field was most likely to be sabotaged before going into action. And ironically, this can actually be really funny to activate, and it's searchable by gear frame, just don't run it in a deck aiming to win most of the time, since the effect is essentially breaking your legs off so that you can use them to beat people. Ancient Gear Fusion is, to everybody's surprise, their fusion spell. Fusion summon one Ancient Gear Fusion monster from your extra deck, using monsters from your hand or field as fusion materials. If you use an Ancient Gear Golem or Ancient Gear Golem Ultimate Pound you control as fusion material, you can also use monsters in your deck as fusion material. Also really good, because while the first effect is literally just polymerization, the extra condition allows you not only to make any of your fusion monsters if you control a golem, but also set up your graveyard in favor of overload fusion. I generally find 3 to be bricky, but 1 or 2 is just fine, given that you already have a fusion enabler with Hound. Ancient Gear Explosive lets you target one Ancient Gear monster you control, destroy it, and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to half its original attack. I'm not giving this any more attention because it's a token out of place GX burn card, and even though it sounds like a decent way to deal a finishing blow during main phase 2 if you're not in the OTK range, you're better off saving your deck space for cards that will actually benefit you in getting to said OTK range. Ancient Gear Factory lets you reveal one level 5 or higher Ancient Gear monster from your hand, then banish a number of Ancient Gear monsters from your graveyard, whose combined levels are double the revealed monsters, and if you do, you can normal summon the real monster this turn without tributing. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to say normal smon. How can I trust a factory that can't even do basic spell check on their fine print? This was way too specific even for 2005 when it came out, since if you wanted to summon golem for example, you had to banish a level 16's worth of ancient gear 
monsters from your graveyard just to afford that normal summon. Do the math, that was at least 4 monsters. Don't run it. Ancient Gear Workshop lets you target one Ancient Gear monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. It's not horrible, but it doesn't do anything else. You might want to save it up for reusing stuff like Wyvern and Box, but it's really not necessary, especially not in more than one. Their last normal spell is Ancient Gear Drill. There's actually zero difference between good and bad Ancient Gears. You imbecile, you fucking moron. If you control an Ancient Gear monster, discard one card, set one spell card directly from your deck. This turn, that spell card cannot be activated. When I said they may have made Wyvern setting prevention a thing because of a certain spell I was referring to drill, because you never know what kind of exploits can come out of spell searching. Needless to say, it's way too slow to do anything of relevance. Ancient Gear Castle is their first continuous spell. All Ancient Gear monsters gain 300 attack. Each time a monster is normal summoned or set, place one counter on this card. If you tribute summon an Ancient Gear monster face up, you can tribute this card instead if the number of its counters is equal to or greater than the number of required tributes. Hmm, it's like one of those old alien cards, but it's on Earth. It's more grounded, one would say. This may have been worth running when Ancient Gear simply had no other options, but it's pretty pointless nowadays. You would think they would stick an effect like this onto a field spell, but guess not. However, if we zoom out just a little bit, we can see the rest of the Ancient Gear Fortress, the other continuous spell with the following effect. Ancient Gear monsters you control cannot be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects during the turn they are normal or special summoned. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of an Ancient Gear card or effect. If this card in a spell and trap zone is destroyed, you can special summon one Ancient Gear monster from your hand or grave Yard. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except Ancient Gear monsters. It doesn't exactly advance your plays by itself, but it sure as hell secures all the other plays you're making. The summon turn protection makes sense in the context of the archetype since you're usually aiming to beat the opponent in one turn, and the response prevention makes sure you don't have to fear any negation of your Ancient Gear effects. Alongside that, this is the second most optimal target for Catapult, unfortunately without the ability to summon monsters from the deck. You wanna run at least two of these to give your Ancient Gears some much needed protection. Their last two spells are the Equip. The first one being Ancient Gear Fist, which you can equip to an Ancient Gear monster, and at the end of the damage step, if that monster battled an opponent's monster and is still on the field, destroy the monster it battled. It applies at the end of the damage step, so unless you're desperately trying to get rid of something that can be destroyed by battle, it's not gonna do much good. And the second equip is Ancient Gear Tank, which increases the attack of the equipped monster by 600, and when it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, it burns the opponent for 600 damage. Yeah, it sure is 2006 in here, just throw these back into the Slavic military base they dug them up from. The first Ancient Gear trap, which they did not receive until 2016, is the continuous trap Ancient Gear Reborn. Once per turn, if you control no monsters, you can target one Ancient Gear monster in your graveyard, special summon it and if you do, it gains 200 attack even if this card leaves the field. You can only control one Ancient Gear Reborn. It's a pretty decent effect brought down by the card's type and activation condition. You can keep reviving important fusion monsters like Howitzer or Megaton, or use it to reactivate Wyvern, but but speaking of which, searching Reborn with Wyvern disables you from setting it, effectively shutting it down for 3 turns, and requiring you to control no monsters usually means it's gonna be used exclusively for comeback attempts. However, that 200 attack boost really might help Wyvern get over a DNA transplant boosted Garrett Hold, the bane of all our existences. The final Ancient Gear card, so far at least, is the normal trap cross dimensional duel. Target one Ancient Gear monster you control, banish it. During the next standby phase, return the monster banished by this effect to the field, and its attack becomes double its original attack until the end of that turn. If an Ancient Gear Golem and or Ancient Gear Golem Ultimate Pound you control would be destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. Well, I guess it's safe to say nobody saw this one coming. Much like Ultimate Pound, it's an awkward to use card produced almost exclusively for the sake of being an anime reference, and the effect kinda shows. You send an Ancient Gear into the future, it comes back with a BFG and proceeds to pulverize most things in sight. The protection effect is fine, but I wish it worked on all Ancient Gear monsters. I'll give it a pass cause I'm a sucker for GX reference and fat attack values, and the card is fairly playable casually at least. Just make sure you're not cross-dimensionally decked in the face while your monster is banished. Let's hand out some ancient grades, this time with a 5-point scale, because a 3-point system should only be left to measure how many factual errors I'm allowed to make before you turn off the video. Consistency gets a solid 3 because even though there are a few search and swarm options in the deck, it's based around high-level monsters and spells that rely on interaction with other cards, which makes them fairly prone to bricking. Power gets a fat fucking 5 because it's ancient 
gears, I'd make it a 10 if I could. Their comeback ability is limited to overload fusion and some very specific targets for reborn, so it gets a 2. Most of them have protection from back row during battle, however, that's kinda irrelevant these days. They have no versatility to speak of. They don't synergize with a lot of archetypes in any conceivable way, and their removal options are limited to hitting things really, really hard. As fun as it is, sometimes it just doesn't work. Here's a sample decklist focusing around Golem and his fusions, which is why the ratios are a tad different from what I recommended in the review, mainly referring to the triple gear frame. The triple trap card is Infinite Transience, which is a godsend for decks that prefer going second. I gotta say though, it feels really good to be able to put a monster reborn in a deck again. Looking over the evolution of Ancient Gear's design philosophy is interesting. The original wave suffered from the typical GX era lack of focus, but the archetypes still had a very clear outline for their playstyle and win condition. The newer support merely provided some modern tools to their ancient arsenal, all in favor of keeping the original spirit alive, that spirit being very angry and with a massive hard-on for punching things. And you know what? In the current Yu-Gi-Oh archetype design environment, which is starting to feel a lot more homogenous as time goes on despite all the advancements in game mechanics, it's really fun to have something that simply lets you sit down, turn your brain off, and drop a power bond for gain. Not to say that ancient gears require no skill in piloting, it's just a matter of preferring a simple beatdown strategy over the usual mass negation and disruption of the modern game. And with ancient gears, I would not have it any other way. Nanone. Hey everybody! Recent prison schizo uh, recent prison escapee and dangerous fugitive old Java Line back at it again. I may not look it, but I'm a loose cannon. I mean they fired me out of a cannon to get me here. Today I'm here on behalf of the Gear Town Tourism Board. Thanks for giving me political asylum, guys. I'm going to show you the wonderful vistas of Gear Town. Here's Ancient Gear Golem. <coughs> that, that's it. He's all that's here. Nobody else lives here. Why do you think it keeps getting blown up? Nobody likes it here. Oh look, here comes the catapult. Hey there everyone, thank you for watching this episode of Archetype Archive, you know the usual Patreon, like, subscribe, etc, etc. The stream will happen next week, or the week after that probably, you know, the list of the roses, like it was meant to be. Um, stay cool, be nice, hug your mom. Love you all, bye.